numerous times around the world where it had mentioned that in levels of extreme poverty, the, the sexual activity increased as a, as a natural regulatory system for the, for the loss and for the, and for the critical state of, uh, of the conditions of living. So, so, so the fact that there is a highly reproductive event happening in, in poor countries is not an accident, but it's a, a part of the nature functioning within itself as a regulating the chaos that people, that people are living in. So, so it's well known that the, that the sexual appetite becomes stronger in times of scarcity. Yeah. Now I have a question uh, for you guys. I know that, the, that among you are, are, are many that are professional, and I mean that you are educated and have degrees. I want to know how much are you willing of, what is your consideration in, in, in giving part of even your professional labor to people for free? Uh, for example, uh, I have a friend who, uh, who lives in, in, a, in a very uh, narrow and, and difficult financial situation who, 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 for example, have an urgent to, to see a dentist. But the problem is uh, the system cannot cover for dentists and there is no availability for to get somebody who really can help people who are poor or desperate. Uh, uh, how much are, are you willing to consider that inside in a community like this, people are willing to to do more altruistic and can share more their professional abilities for the for the best of the community in general. Yeah, I think that's a great question. Um, one of the advantages I think of this movement uh, is that it does attract people from all different professions and all different walks of life, whether economic, cultural. It, it breaks all the barriers, right? So I know, like I'm an accountant, so I'm a chartered accountant here in, in Canada. I mean, it's kind of a joke for this movement uh, in general, but um, you know, we have people from, we have veterinarians, we have engineers, we have uh, construction workers, we have you know, just a wide variety of people that come to this movement and are willing to share their knowledge of what they know in this society that benefits them in the society that they've learned and share that for free, actually. So I mean, in a dentist situation, I'm not familiar if we have any dentists, but uh, I mean, not yet, but we'll try and get some. <laughs> uh, but uh, that's the goal, right? The goal is to have enough skills in your community and you're teaching those skills and you're making the resources that those, I mean, a dentist would need some equipment. He'd also have to buy that equipment or at least be able to access it at some point in some way and be able to support your community through this transition because the powers that be are not going to just allow you to not pay for things uh, and, uh, and cooperate and like interact with the system. So in order to protest it non-violently, which is our movement, it's a non-violent movement, um, we would have to do that within our communities, within the skills that we share. And the more skills we have, the stronger that we can, we can be. Just, uh, yeah. just a comment regarding, uh, regarding your population. How much is too much is, and what's the average? Uh, the study been done already around the world that humans as a species on this planet, we consume 10 times more than we allow it as an energy. It doesn't matter what energy is, whether it's going to be solar or we consume 10 times more energy than the next largest species on Earth, which is plankton. Um, so in terms of 7 billion people, we're a little bit 10 times more than we're allowed on Earth. And the calculation has been done that no more than about a billion people is perfectly enough as species to be Happily prosperous. Yes, we can theoretically sus uh, sustain seven, eight billion people through technology, but in terms of space, in terms of uh, personal space, and how much we occupy uh, natural resources, because I think space in, in, uh, is natural resource too, uh, forest and other animals, we're supposed to understand them. They, they need space more than we do. We can go up high in high cities. They cannot go yeah. above each other. Uh, I know what you mean. Um, we, we can continue this population conversation uh, after the, the questions here. We have touched on it a couple times. I mean, if you look at the population of Japan, it's like, what, 130 million people, I think, and it's a very small piece of land. I mean, you could fit, I don't know, 15 of them in Canada at least. Uh, probably a lot more, and you know we don't have almost any population here in Canada. So there are spaces in the world where you break down the countries and the global and even as planet, there are no countries, right? There's no artificial barriers at all. So people will be free to move to other areas where they're less, where they're less, more sparsely populated, you could say, and share that land. But I mean, the population question is a complex one. I think a lot of people have 
some preconceived notions about the resources of the earth and what it can sustain, given what we're doing now, and it is completely unsustainable now. I, I agree with you 100%. It's just that we could be doing so much better given what we know. Uh, yeah. During the part of the movie where they were showing the uh, design for the cities, um, uh, what I was getting from that was the idea of a transition from uh, a society where survival is based on money to a society where survival is kind of based on more on technology. And I'm, I'm just wondering, that made me kind of think, well, what kind of problems could arise out of that? And, you know, what, uh, are there any thoughts for that? The technology class ruling us now and taking over that way, is that sort of what you're... That's, that's a frequent comment that, that the, the Venus Project and the Zeitgeist movement gets. Is, isn't just all the people of the technological power going to be the ones who then take us over? Or eventually the machines? Well, that's um, okay, so you're thinking more along the machines. Um, I mean, it could be any number of things. I'm just any number of things. Well, one, one thing I would like to just comment on is the perspective of the Venus Project heavily comes from the engineering and technology side because it is about how do we just lay the land, how do we lay an alternative society, and how do we make resources available for people to use, so it's, it's that blueprint effect. And so that's like the first perspective that usually you sort of, you know, you just pick up on. Jacques is a social engineer. There's still discussion that needs to be done about what's the psychology, you know, effects and um, how much more art and culture would we have in this kind of system that would give us a certain freedom from having to, to work and do other jobs that we don't enjoy. So definitely the technological aspect is the... Is, is kind of front and center for a lot of people. And it just becomes you know, a way in which they're just tools, they're neutral tools. And when human behavior is in a more balanced, uh, more balanced sort of, um, or behaving in more of a balanced way, then the tools are used in a neutral sense. Does that help? I feel like I'm, I'm kind of dancing around where you're, you're coming from. I'm sorry, it's late. <laughs> Um, just, uh, um, we could uh, definitely touch on that, but I think we already are living very dependent on technology today. I mean, given where, <laughs> how did you get here? I mean, uh, <laughs> do you grow your own food in your home? Probably not. You go to a grocery store, and how does it get there? It gets transported there. We're very dependent on technology today. I mean, people you probably use internet on a daily basis um, uh, for and not just entertainment means, but actually to rely on uh, a lot of things that they they rely on today, including their my bank accounts, I guess. Uh, but um, in the future, it would only be more so, I suppose, in a, in a Venus project, and there would have to be controls for that. Um, I have to um, take only one more question because we have to get out of here by 12.15. Uh, the, we will answer more questions of Peter Pan, again, uh, which is free for everyone, 373 Queen West, so just around the corner. Um, there's been hands up here for a little while, uh, so we'll take you, and if you do leave, uh, please sign up for our mailing list if you'd like to find out more. Our next public meeting is on Thursday. This coming Thursday, we're going to talk more about action. We'll also be, have a chance to answer all your questions, I think, um, but more about what we can do here in Toronto together, uh, what actions we can take, and I think that's going to be a much more interesting uh, meeting, so I hope I encourage you all to join. Yes?